Hello, this is Mr. Burgess. Today we're talking about solving the equations using the distributive property. So this is kind of keeping this process of learning how to solve different types of equations going that we've been doing thus far. So first of all, let's look at a couple of these practice problems from our Bell work. And uh, let's start with this first one. We've got our Great Wall of China. And on the right side, we've got R minus 5R, which is going to result in minus 4R. And then we have plus 7 equals negative 1. So to solve, we're going to remove the 7 by subtraction. And we end up with negative 1 minus 7, which is negative 8. And all of that is equal to negative 4R. Now let's divide both sides by negative 4. And when we do that, negative 8 divided by negative 4 is positive 2. So in, for our first example, R equals positive 2. All right, so far so good. Okay, so let's do another one of these where we are solving an equation that has uh, very, two different variables on the same side of the equation. So here we've got minus 6N and then minus 1N. So this will simplify to be 7 subtract 7n equals negative 21. And then we're going to minus 7 from both sides. And we end up with negative 7n equals negative 28. Now to solve that, we're just going to Divide both sides by that negative 7 in front of the n. And 28 divided by 7 is 4. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we end up with n equals 4 in this case. And that was done. Okay, now we've got to simplify one just to kind of go back even a, a little more steps that we've done. So let's start with our negative 15. Oh, we got a, a like term of positive 12. So negative 15. And positive 12 simplify to give us negative 3. All right, then we've got 2x and no other x terms on there, so we've got about a plus 2x. Then if we look at the y terms, we've got 3y and minus 3y. Oh, I'll be darned if those don't cancel each other out. So when we simplify, this is all we're left with in this case. Okay. So the way we did that was we identified the like terms and then solved the problem, right? So that's how we did that. Okay, so when it comes to the distributive property, that's where we just multiply any number on the outside of parentheses by any numbers on the inside, like that, in order to get the problem simplified enough to begin to collect the like terms and to solve it. So let's get right into it. Let's start with this one right here. We've got 2 times the parentheses 5x plus 2 equals 24. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. So 10x. And 2 times 2 is 4. All of that equals 24. Now we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And that will give us 10x equals 20. Then if we divide both sides by 10, we finish up with x equals 2. All right, so far so good. That's uh, that problem. We got another one that's similar. All right, so let's keep our distributive property going. 2 times x and 2 times 2 right there. So 2 times x would just be 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. And all of that equals negative 8. So let's start solving for x by subtracting 4 from both sides. And that gives us 2x equals negative 12. Let me divide by 2. And we end up with x equals 
negative 6. Okay, excellent. All right, keep it going. We've probably got a couple more problems here, and then they're rearranged, so they're a little different than the first couple. So let's let's not get uh, frustrated by that. Let's just power through. So we've got negative 2 times x and negative 2 times minus 2. So on the right side, we're going to have negative 2x plus 4 when we apply the distributive property and multiply it in there. And all of that equals negative 16. So now let's solve like we have been the last few days. So we have minus 4 from both sides. And negative 16 minus 4 equals negative 20. And all of that equals negative 2x. So all I have to do now is divide by negative 2. And I end up with x. Okay, I got a little problem here. Um, oh, negative 16 minus 4 is negative 20. I put an x right there. So you got to be careful when you solve stuff that you put the right symbols. Okay, negative 20 divided by negative 2 is positive 10. There we go. And then this cancels out and just leave me with 1x. Good thing we didn't get too far along and have to re redo that problem, huh? Okay, go on to the next one. We got 38 equals 3x minus 2 times 2 on the back side. So we're going to multiply 2 by each of these numbers. That will give us 6x minus 4 on the right side and 38 on the left side. So when we start simplifying, we start out by adding 4 to both sides. 38 plus 4 would be 42. And all of that equals 6x. And at that point, we've got to do something to find x again. So we divide both sides by 6. And when you do that, you end up with 7 equals x. All right, so far so good. Let's keep it going until we think we're there. We got two more examples, so I thought I'd just page forward and look real quick. All right, so let's look at this one. We got a negative in front of these parentheses, and that just means negative one, doesn't it? So negative one times four x would be negative four x. Negative one times negative two would be plus two. And that all equals 14. And now we're going to draw our wall and subtract 2. Okay, and then that's going to give us negative 4x equals 12. Okay, now if that it wasn't quite far enough, now we've got to divide by negative 4. And when we do that, that brings us up to x equals negative 3. And that's our final answer. x equals negative 3. All right, last example. We've got one of these where we've got to get rid of the parentheses and combine that one with the left side before we can solve. So let's get with it. 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times that minus 2 is minus 4 plus 1 equals 21. So we combine negative 4 and 1, and that gives us 8x minus 3 equals 21. And we need to move the 3 to the other side, so we put plus 3 here. And that would be a good place to add it in the uh, problem that we're in. So we get 8x equals 21 plus 3, which is 24. Need to be careful. I'm getting a little bit sloppy here. Huh? Okay, so i got to finish off by dividing by 8 to both sides. And I get x equals 3. 
So I think I'm getting a pretty good handle on how to, how to do this. And so what is my assignment then? Well, it's number 13, solving the equations using the distributive property. So good luck with that assignment, and thank you very much.